biking while I learn to swim. Try to keep my head above the best I can. That's why. Here I am. It's morning in a city at the heart of America's innovation economy. <laughs> and I'm on the doorstep of a rocker, ready to power his music with sun. That's the sound of sunshine coming down. Coming, coming down. Michael Franti's folky hip hop hit evokes images of beach and surf. We can bomb the world to pieces. But his songs of protest are what won him fans worldwide, especially his opposition to wars fought over oil. For him, the personal is political. It's within our grasp to run everything in this house off of solar energy, including our car, and never have to, 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 to use, you know, fuels that are ripped out of the ground ever again. This is where all the sexy action happens. Over. <laughs> this is where all the actual sunshine comes into our life, you know. Franti so is right putting his money where his mouth right is, right installing a new solar system at his home and studio. And all of us are looking at the effects that fossil fuels are having on our planet and on our own energy bills, and we're thinking, how can we become more independent? That I believe that every home should be its own energy plant. And I believe that it's possible for us to have 100% renewable energy for 100% of the planet. If that sounds revolutionary, wait till you meet the guy who co-founded the company installing Franti's Solar, Danny Kennedy, activist turned entrepreneur. A ride in his electric car quickly shows he's a man on a mission. If you think about how quickly the coal industry has declined in historic terms, you know, after centuries of dominance, is an example of how fast fossil fuels can fall. Kennedy spent most his adult life in Australia, working with Greenpeace, fighting big oil and big coal. I spent a lot of my career saying what I was against, and that was the use of fossil fuels for reasons of human rights and the politics of production and extraction and the waste and pollution that it creates, particularly climate change. But there came a time when he'd had enough of dangling from cranes and staging sit-ins. He picked up and moved to the Silicon Valley, aiming to create a business to benefit the planet. It was the birth of Sungevity, a solar energy startup that now boasts over a thousand employees. So the idea was to demonstrate scale, that you could actually deploy to the millions um, and, and take it from being an argument to an army that was undeniable in its force. So we've, we've done that. We built a business which can deploy at scale household solar. It's a business built largely on deep pockets of venture capitalists who are pouring billions into clean energy technologies. Investments that are translating into jobs. In the US last year, the solar industry alone created more jobs than oil, gas and pipeline sectors combined. Companies worldwide are taking note, like executives at this Japanese electric car plant, now seeking advice from a Silicon Valley expert. So if the market for EVs take off and scales, then you could produce all cars that are EVs. Stanford business professor Tony Siba has a message for boardrooms from Tokyo to Paris. Solar is sweeping away the industrial age of transportation and energy, fast. The solar installed capacity has doubled every two years since the year 2000. Doubled every two years. Um, right now, solar PV is about one, one and a half percent of the world's energy capacity. If you keep doubling, essentially all you need is seven more doublings in order for solar to be 100 percent of the world's energy supply. That's only um, 14 years away. Danny Kennedy shares that faith in Silicon Valley's disruptive power on full display here at Powerhouse, a place clean energy startups come to share ideas. Um, but again, the format is who you are, what you do. It's a room full of software engineers and financial wonks betting the next Apple, Google or Facebook will be a renewable energy company.
Uh, we do the greenbiz.com website. We provide loans uh, to, for solar systems in West Africa. There's a billion dollar solar software opportunity today, and that's what all of us are tapping into. But there's a skeptic here. Denis Giorno is from a French oil and gas company looking for investments in green energy, but with a different opinion than folks here about the pace of change. If you look at how much energy we need and you look at the energy metrics of the world globally, we will still consume in the best case in uh, 2030, 2035, 60 to 70 percent of the energy coming from fossil fuels. Still, Kennedy believes estimates from oil companies are just plain wrong. $150,000 at a time, we're giving out $25 million over the next five years. Smart money, he says, is on renewables, being as disruptive as cell phones were to landlines. An incumbent technology set was disrupted by basically batteries. You know, that was the thing that allowed the phone to first be disconnected from the wall and made mobile, and then to be empowered to do more things with computing technology. And that has completely transformed our lives and made telephony service way better and cheaper and more available to more people. And that happened in a couple decades. That's what's going to happen in energy. We're going to have a better service for less. If that strikes you as California dreaming, this Stanford professor has a prediction aimed at Canadians. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mark Jacobson. Mark. He's an engineer winning pop culture praise for his positive spin on climate change. Do me a favor right now, uh, if you, Mark, look right in the camera and tell people everything's going to be okay. Uh, everything, everything will be okay. If we That's not the promise of a tree-hugging hippie, but someone who says science is on his side. We found, have found for each of 139 countries and 50 states that there is some mix that allows that country or state to be powered 100% by renewable energy for all purposes in 2050. Tony Siva, uh, we, we had an interview with him about his projections, and he's saying that, that the transition is going to happen far faster, that it's going to actually happen by 2030. What do, you, what do you think of that? Well, our plans, we believe it's technically and economically possible to transition by 2030 100%, but we think because of political and social reasons, it'll take longer. Jacobson's team of researchers built a global roadmap for that clean energy transition, dubbed the Solutions Project. After analyzing a staggering amount of data, their blueprint for Canada suggests a combination of wind, solar, hydro, wave, and geothermal can meet 100% of Canadian energy needs. The researchers calculated clean energy nets 200,000 new jobs and eliminates air pollution, saving $107 billion in health costs every year. It's a vision of 100% renewable Canada. So that would power Canada for all purposes. And that's electricity, transportation, heating, cooling, industry, agriculture, forestry, and fishing. No, no oil and gas in that projection. There's no oil, there's no gas, and then all the nuclear, nuclear would be retired, no coal, no biofuels even. It's all wind, water, and solar powering Canada 100%. That would eliminate all air pollution health problems in the country, which on average worldwide, air pollution health costs between 3 and 7% of each country's GDP. And we eliminate climate costs and we stabilize energy prices. But really, how could it happen so quickly? Right now, solar generates less than 2% of North American energy. Still, residential solar installation continues growing exponentially. Subsidies help. I would be so happy if everyone who has a system on the roof here would go solar. But at Sungevity, they're counting on the ingenuity of coders and software engineers to drive down the price of solar installation. Peter Graff is the software platform guru who's making it easier to sell solar. Peter. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Good Welcome. to meet you. At Sungevity, we are trying to be the platform of solar. Mm -hmm. Think of the Uber for solar. Their web platform unites solar installers and customers in a common cause, cheap, clean energy. So it's, it's a very easy way for customers to kind of see and understand the impact that solar can have on them. Mm -hmm. And, and obviously hitting the dollars and cents, which is the yeah. bottom line, which is what people want to know. But the key is, Duncan, that you see it instantly. Sungevity still has the feel of a tech startup, and after nearly a decade in business, 
has yet to post a profit. If you're going to use electricity, it may as well be straight from the source. Clean. Still, Danny Kennedy insists the global march of green technologies is unstoppable. When you create more value for investors, which we've done for three years now globally, and the flood of capital onto the clean energy side of the ledger is far greater than the flood of capital into the new dirty electricity generating sector, those tides can't be turned. So we win. How long it will take is now our struggle. Here comes the, sun. the struggle is where Michael Franti comes back in, rallying San Franciscans to demand affordable solar power. After watching technology disrupt the music business, and I saw our business change overnight because of downloading. He's convinced change is afoot in energy too. I remember there was a there was a time in history class when I was reading about how we would hunt whales for blubber to use to light our street lamps. And I was thinking, that's, that's freaking crazy, you know? And I think now people are going to look back at this era and say, you really, you fought wars in the Middle East, you tore apart lands, you polluted the air, you melted the ice caps all for, um, when, when all, all the while you had the sun overhead providing you an unlimited amount of power. The sound of sunshine. Is the sun setting rapidly on energy and transportation as we know it today? Maybe if Silicon Valley is betting on a clean disruption. Duncan McHugh, CBC News, San Francisco.